So I want to work through some conservation of energy problems. If you understand that concept that matter is neither created or destroyed, that means that you have to account for all the energy in the system, right? Whether it is gravitational potential energy or kinetic energy or thermal energy. And right now I'd like to do a couple of problems that are in an idealized world where we have no friction, where we have no thermal energy lost. So really, all we're talking about is mechanical energy is equal to kinetic energy plus the potential energy. Once we know what the energy is in the system, we know what the sum of the kinetic energy and the potential energy is. If we know any two of these, then we can find the third. All right? This is a simple math strategy. If you're given three and you know two, you should be able to find the other one if, you, if it's well defined in any equation. Let me take the first example of, of energy skate park, where you guy, you have a guy up on a hill. Let's start off with a skater at a height h above the ground, and he's on a skateboard. Okay. Ultimately, I am going to ask you how high does he go over here? Okay, how high does he get up the other side? But to do that, I am going to ask you another question, another in-between question. I want to know how fast is he going at the bottom of the hill? Right. If I know that the mass of the skater and the skateboarder, well, let's see, a kid, I don't know, 60 kilograms, with a skateboard, I don't know, 63 kilograms. Before he starts to move, what kind of energy does he have? Potential. Gravitational potential energy. How much? Do we know how much? MGH is the equation. Do we know his mass? Do we know the uh, acceleration of gravity? Yeah. And do we know his height? Ooh, not yet. All right, so typically you're in a skateboard park, I don't know, 10 feet, 3 meters high. Okay. Say he's on a half pike, is that what you call it? Half pike, and a half pike has a side wall of 3 meters high. Okay. So MGH is equal to 63 times 9.8 times 3. Can someone find out? How many joules our skater has? 1,852. Um, let's leave it at two sig figs. I'm going to call this 3.0 meters. So uh, 1,852. Mr. A, is that proper number of sig figs? Um, no, we have to write this with just two sig figs. So let's see. That's significant. That is either going to stay at 8 or going to go up to a 9. Nine, okay. So um, we're going to make that a nine. And what are the units? GPE? Joule, joule, joule. joule, joule joules, right? Joule, joule. All right, so 1,900 joules. Okay. All right, we're pulling it all together, sig figs and everything. That's how much energy he starts out with. Now, if no energy is lost in the system, how much energy is he going to have at the bottom of the hill? The same, right? Right, right. Now, what kind of energy is that? Is that gravitational kinetic. potential energy or kinetic energy? So you're telling me that if no energy is lost in the system, he's still going to have 1,900 joules of energy, but it's not going to be gravitational potential energy. It's going to be kinetic energy. That's what you're telling me, right? So now I can say Ke is equal to Ke at the bottom of the hill. Now, this is, this is Ke right there. Ke at the bottom of the hill is equal to 1,900 joules. If I know what the kinetic energy is, can I ha find how fast he's going? Yes. Okay. This is where you're going to have to do a little bit of tricky math, so bear with me, and this is probably really good that you're taking notes right now. I know that... The formula for Ke is equal to one-half mv squared. I really want to know what v is. 
I know everything else, so I need to solve this equation for V. What I have to do, I mean, I think we've stepped through this before, and, and it was confusing to some of you, and those of you who have good algebra skills, this is, you know, it, it, this is understandable. Those of you who don't are taking good notes right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by 2, and that eliminates the half, and then I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by M, and that's going to give me a V squared. And then I'm going to take the square root of both sides, and the square root of anything squared is that thing. So this is what I want you to have in your notes, that V is equal to 2KE over M square root. Let me say that again. The velocity is equal to the square root of 2 times the kinetic energy divided by the mass. Now, I have my equation in terms of V, which is what I want to find out. I know what my KE is, and I know what my M is, and so now we substitute and solve. So I'm going to be taking the square root of, 19, of 2 times 1900 divided by the mass of the guy, which is 63 kilograms. And that's going to give First one, the top part. So it's going to be 2 times, two, 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 two times 1,900, which is 3,800, which is, and then you divide that by 63, which is, I don't remember that, was a big number. So now, he has got, he's at the bottom of the hill. All of his gravitational potential energy has been turned into kinetic energy at the bottom of the hill. If there is no energy lost in the system, that energy is going to carry him up the hill, right? How far? All the way back to the top where he started. Let's prove it mathematically, okay? So now the case is that we have, we're going to convert all our KE into GPE, right? He's going to go, he's at the bottom of the hill, he's got speed. He's going to go up the hill to some point where he stops, and we want to know what that height is. So now... We know that our, up here, he's going to stop up here somewhere. All that KE is going to be turned into GPE. So if, if he had 1,900 joules of kinetic energy at the bottom, how many joules of gravitational potential energy will he have at the top? The same, right? The same. So he's got 1,900 when he started off with. He had 1,900 at the bottom when he was going fast. And he's going to have 1,900 on the other side. This is conservation of energy. He's keeping this the same. Now, we've not lost any due to friction. All right. So now, if we know that GPE is equal to 900, we know that GPE is equal to MGH. And if we're trying to figure out what this new H is, then we have to solve this equation for H. So let's rewrite that. Uh, we're going to divide both sides of the equation by MG. So H is equal to GPE divided by mg. All right, if that, was, if that algebra is too fast for you, you can review your notes later. But all I'm doing is solving for h in the potential energy equation. So if GPE is equal to mgh, then h is equal to GPE divided by mg. We know what the GPE is, we know what his mass is, and we know what the acceleration of gravity is. So we're going to plug in numbers. 1900 divided by 63 times 9.8. Okay? Make sure that you've got parentheses in the denominator. Okay? Is equal to 3.07. If we're going to pay attention to sig figs, Oh my gosh, we've just defied the laws of physics. He actually went higher than what he started. Oh, but what? What? I'm so confused. He, he grabbed some air. Grabbed some air. No, here's the problem. When we rounded up 1900, that's what forced everything up. Yeah. So, three. He finished up as high as he started. 
I put this one up here first because you guys had some experience with Energy Skate Park. That without friction in the system, it was a perpetual motion machine, right? He kept going up as high as he started and then going back. And he never stopped. Right? 